I preferably like wall because I feel like it's it's like the bank for your book. You know? okay. It's like driving a Civic. Yeah. It's simple. It's affordable. It's good. So I prefer to go with wall. And I like Andes too, but it, it, it's more it's more expensive. It breaks down more. So it's more like maintenance intensive. Yeah, and wall it's less maintenance. That you can clip on, yeah. They usually base it like in in millimeters. <coughs> they give you different different sets that you could use, and depend on the person. If they like the length, you could go shorter, you could go higher. But it's it's not much not much of a, of a difference between like the two and the three. There's not much of a difference. Explain to me the different clipper sizes. Okay, there's uh, there's the number one through the eight. Okay. Yeah. There, there is ten and twelve, but that's like a very rare numbers to get. It's like a collectible item, most most. Yeah, because I guess if it was that long, you're gonna comb it and just cut it with scissors. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we have them, but. You barely don't don't get it that often. Oh, sorry. So like, how high is a number one? <laughs> I'll be lying to you. It's short. The exact measurement I won't tell you now, but it's short. It's really short. I, I have both. I actually have both the, the metal ones and the the plastics. Okay. But I feel like the metal ones are more like for buzz cuts. You get like a two, you're gonna want to get a haircut by a number two metal guide. Why? Because it's more of a closer, like a closer shave. It's more direct because the way it works, that there's a metal blade at the bottom, and what actually cuts the hair is the top blade. Well, on the plastic, you you have a third party already, which is the blade, the metal blade, and then comes the plastic. While with the metal clippers, you eliminate that third party. So, you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's gonna be it's gonna even be closer. A more exact cut. Exact. Yeah. yeah. The plastic bends and stuff. You put right. the pressure, and now it's a little bit off. It just eliminates the step. The metal clip is direct. Okay. All right. So let's talk about. Um, about mirrors. How important are mirrors when you're cutting hair? There's a phrase that says the mirror never lies to you. <laughs> okay. I never fail. Well, the mirror is super important. If you notice, every barbershop has two in the two-sided walls, mirrors on both sides. That's for the reason, you know. Okay. So you can compare the different angles, how it looks like. It's very so important. So you're cutting somebody's hair, like you can look across the room and see, like, with different lighting, what does it really look like? Right. Yeah. And you see little defects, lines, shades, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Okay. So, so would you say that that it's necessary to have like a handheld mirror also? Definitely. Or is yeah. that more for the client? That's that's more for like the client to show him because you know you get a closer look. But I mean, like for myself, I come out on here. I definitely need that the help. Okay. So it, it helps out a lot. So you cut your own hair? I come out on here. Okay. So it's not difficult for you to cut your own hair? Not now. At the beginning? <laughs> In the beginning it was hell. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably nine years ago. Wow. The cape. Do you have any preferences as to the material or like the type or different features? Because I know the different capes have different, different features. On the material, not really. What I look mostly in a cape that is very large. <clears throat> I like to, I love when, when I put the cape over the client, I like to, s 
to see a good area covered by the cape because that shows that the, the hair won't get to him. Okay. You know, some capes tend to be long but narrow and that's not good because when the client gets up, it tends to fall on his lower back. Oh, okay. So it's not doing what it's supposed to do, which is cover you from here. Okay. So I feel that that's important. It has, to, it has to lay over your shoulders and cover you and the whole chair. If it covers you in the whole chair, then that's a good cape. Uh -huh. And then, like, I've been seeing these capes where, where people, where it has, like, a clear front, so, like, people can, like, still oh, be yeah. texting and on their phone and That's stuff. a new thing. That's, like, a custom cape. We have it here. Okay. How do you feel about that? Like, 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 you're over here cutting somebody's it, hair. It's, it's cool because the client appreciates it. You know? They're like, oh, shit. You know? There's a meme on Instagram that says uh, when your barber has a PhD in barbering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so lighting. How important is lighting? And how much lighting do you really need? If anything, it's the most important part. Okay. Um, you do need a lot of lighting and it has to be white lighting. What's the difference? Because the yellow lighting, it, it, it creates too much shadow and it's not good for your vision in the long run. That's why like when you go to clinics, hospitals, and barbershops and all, you see white light. Because it's like the best light for your eyes compared to the sun, original sunlight, you know? The yellow one, it messes up your vision in the long run. Okay, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, so let's talk about like additional products that you use either um, on their hair, uh, on a client's hair, or during the cut, or um, yeah, so like let's start from the basic stuff. Like, like you're gonna need alcohol, you're gonna need water, you're gonna need yeah, shaving whatever. gel if necessary, um, a pomade or gel. You know, some clients don't want nothing. They don't like none of that. Some people don't even want cream, nothing. They just there's people that do ask for it, you know. I have this one guy that he, if you notice, I have a mocha gorita. He's the only one that uses it. Yeah, the only guy that uses. It. So you buy it just for him? Just for him. And nobody else tends to touch it. He's the only one that touches that. Okay. But he asked for it, you know, you gotta do customer service. So it's little things like that. And um, mostly I, what I use a lot is gel. Okay. Because it's quick to wash off. It's not omission on the fingers. You know, it smells good. It shines and it does what it does, what it has to do. Okay. Just for man, Beijing. That's like a, like a beer diet. Okay. No, um, besides that, I, I don't use much, bro. Probably like a different creams to shave, gels. Uh, What's like a necessity, necessity that you have to have? Well, first, my clippers. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Everything plays a role, bro. Everything plays a role. Um, the alcohol, especially for like, you know, to disinfect your combs, or scissors, uh, bump patrol, um, all those things, all those things, you know, are very important. Yeah, I see a lot of people with, hold on, let me go grab it really quick. Yeah. <clears throat> I see a lot of people with this. With the oil sheen. Yeah, with, with the oil sheen, and then also, also, this one right here. A cool here. No. Um, this one here, if you notice it says this is a five in one. This can serves five things in one can. It's for the machines, you know, it expands the lifetime. Okay. Um, and the other one is for your hair, which is usually for like you know um, like African American, uh, fuzzy hair, frizzy hair, all of that, that's what it's for. So if you go to like some older school barber shops, like you'll see them with the brush to like brush off the hair with the clients and stuff. Like how do you feel about the difference between using compressed air and using the brush? Because I noticed everybody still has a brush. But yeah. A lot of people don't really use it. Matter of fact, the brushes in Florida now are illegal. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's uh, they've been banned from the from the state because they believe that it's unhygienic you know you yeah, swipe it in one person and yeah so they took it off so now it's like a like a code actually to have air hoses in a barbershop that's why you never see any barbershop in miami with no air wow, that's crazy. It, it's a code yeah. yeah i didn't even know that at all okay so 
Okay, so so let's talk about the different services um, that you can offer in a barbershop, right? So. <laughs> He's <laughs> saying, wants to mention the cooker. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Yeah. Kids not to get burned. Some kids are really sensitive with their skin. It's hard because when you're on the spot, it's hard to think about. Mm-hmm. And lubricates the machine and doesn't let clients get like rashes on their neck. Because sometimes when you use a machine and it's too warm, I think he wants to sit down. Nah, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I just have my brother. Your next, your next he has to interview everybody. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Nah, look, you, yeah, <laughs> you, Faith, Faith of next. Nah, nah, what? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it in Spanish and everything. Nah, nah, I won't talk Spanish. No, we can talk shit. No, no, no. Like I'm not even a barber. I just sit here. I don't sweep. I don't sweep. Let's talk about your technique when you sweep. Yeah. So you get the broom, you go left, and you right. And if you don't want to go none of the ways, you just jump that shit. And you're like, oh, hey, it's not in your room. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about <coughs> let's talk about rent. How do you pay rent, and how much rent do you pay? Here we pay two fifty, two fifty seven with the cleaning a, a week. Okay, a week. So that's like a thousand twenty eight. Yeah, a month. <clears throat> it's, it's pretty easy, bro. You just rent your chair. You, you pay daily. You pay fifty dollars to for your space. As long as you pay those fifty dollars, whatever you else you make is yours. You just pocket it. Um, I know that, that that different barbershops do it differently. So, like, what are the different ways that barbers pay rent? Um, the old school way, usually the traditional way, was percentage, which was seventy thirty. You know, you you get seventy, and the house keeps thirty. But that doesn't that doesn't work no more. Yeah, because then you got to be sitting there counting everybody's pocket. Right, and uh, it has its pros and its cons. If you do percentage as an owner, you're gonna make money, but you have to be there 24/7 so they don't steal from you, because it's so easy to steal from you. <clears throat> if you don't want the headache, you're planning to take the L for a little less, and you don't have to be there. You just go on rent, which is the easiest thing. And the thing with rent is that whether they cut or they don't, they owe you that day already. You gotta pay it. So, so, so you see the differences? Like the actual, you know, if it's 200 or 250 or, or whatever it is, um, you're not obligated to show up. You're just obligated to pay. You got to pay. Yeah. So I guess if you're on like a 70-30 split, like you better be there. And that's day. another thing. When you have a um, percentage, if you don't make nothing, you don't owe nothing. See the difference? But in rent, if you don't make nothing, you, you already owe something. You owe that day. You have to pay that day. So... So, so what happens if you don't, if you don't pay? No, you have to pay. As long as you don't pay? Not LA. Not LA. <laughs> <laughs> Not LA. You gotta take off. You gotta take off, Pablo. Gotta bounce. He won't let you work another week. You gotta, you gotta pay your debt. <clears throat> you gotta pay your debt. What's, what's like the most amount of rent that like, a like that they could charge and not be like well, two over the time? I feel like 250 is already pushing it. That's pushing and it's getting old already. And the problem is that now, let's say you do want to charge more, but it's so many barbershops or competition that it doesn't even work like that no more. So now to keep your barbers, you gotta even lower the rent or you gotta stay there. Anything else is a gamble. Hmm. Okay, so, so like with so much competition, it's literally, Literally, you drive by and every single plaza has one, sometimes even two shops. Two shops. So, like, how do you, how do you keep up with that? It's a rival the fittest. So, <clears throat> so, so, let's talk about clientele. How do you get your clientele, like, as a new bar? There's a lot of ways, bro. The, you have your old clients, clients that, you know, that actually follow you, that they were your friend, that you met in school. Then you have your regular barbershop clients that you meet them here. And some barbers, I mean, some clients, they follow you along, whether you move from barbershops or not. Sometimes you lose them. You always gain new ones. 
the whole thing is knowing how to keep them, you know? Talking to them, making some type of connection, a follow-up, say, hey, how you been? You know, little things like that. That, that plays a big role. Hmm. Okay, so let's go back to services, right? <clears throat> so I see you guys have a towel warmer. Uh, what other additional services do you guys offer? A haircut, a shave. Five cents. Hmm? Uh, the the face um the face mask. It's like a like a peel off mask. You apply it on you and you do that. You could do that too. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so how often do you actually do any of that stuff? It, it it's rare, bro, because nowadays a hot towel is considered like a luxury. You know, you get a hot towel shave. It's like a luxury, which is supposed to be something standard as, as in the 1950s. In the 1950s, it was just normal. Now it's not normal. First, it costs more and it takes more time. You know? And there's people that are not willing to do both. How often do you guys use the towel? Sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> we have I've, I've actually heard where, where, where like, they don't even use the towel. <laughs> Cut all this shit off. <laughs> How often do you use this one right here? I personally haven't used it, but. Okay. <laughs> he shows people how to make money in different ways. Like he shows how to make he shows people how to make money in different ways. He has different um, episodes like barbershop. You are you gonna do plumbing, electricity, a bunch of different shit. Alright, so that's all we're gonna talk about today. That's all the time we got. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Alright guys, so that was your video on the tools that they use at the barbershop, what's necessary, what's mandatory, what you're going to use, what you don't use. Uh, remember to comment, like, subscribe, follow a real one. Stay tuned for the next series, Barbershop 101, where we go into how you do different haircuts. And let's keep it moving.